Това е предприемът, където е много хубаво. Айде да си те кажете добро утро на английски. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Добре, добре. Good morning. Айде. Хай. Наставничка. Айде, дъжка. Айде, ти там възади ще се криеш. И айде, дъжка. Не, не, те фати, браш. Ти, Валек, и не поздравиш. Баш. Все е емоция, ке ви изплашам глупа. Как? 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 От къде сте, дечки? От коя е насълба? Живете в школа, дечки? Другите? Ако сакате, може да се послужим с акчинята, може да поидем там. Он да се ставили на масата. Дички, Мичка така да? Мичка да кой има? Това е една малка гифта от малка гърла. Това е малка гърла. Много добро мотото на кампанията ми има дете, не трябва да бъде изключено от квалитетното образование. Великовика, ова е много важно. Доброто образование е ключ от успешен живот. Некои разбира, некои не е Кристиан, така да. Само в ден нит, само в ден донт. Браво! Yes. 
the, the aim was to, uh, to give a message to the politicians. Mm -hmm. Politicians come back to school, it's time to learn. Yes, exactly. They should be the example. But we had uh, a lot of media, but no politicians. <laughs> Very little politicians. Yes, yes. But the message was sent. I'm fine. Yeah. But that's very good. That's very good because it really uh, you know, shows to the politicians also that they must do their bit, you know, to promote education and and, uh, and give the example. So um, that's so they will be more understanding. Now, of course, I guess they've all got their minds on other things yeah. like the election. Yeah. election yeah. Yeah. Like that. But uh, they will, it's important for them that they also, take. Also today we have, uh, this is the day of debates. We have debates organized in primary and high school. Yes. And in uh, one of the universities, University for Philosophy, a uh, debate for uh, how to, to get uh, better education, quality education, how to end exclusion. Exactly. Yes. And tomorrow is uh, our final event. Mm -hmm. It will be in the city park. And uh, it will be very fun for, for the kids, for, yes, the, for yes. the youngsters. Very interesting. And how, how, will the, how are these debates uh, today animated? The, each uh, school will have in someone each, who... Uh, each will school, uh, where, uh, 50 schools from Macedonia uh, had said that they will include themselves into the mm -hmm. debates. But the main activity will be in the Faculty for Philosophy, uh, where people, students mainly, for different organizations and from students' bodies, will uh, debate how non-formal education can improve uh, the education in the whole, mm -hmm. like the process. Yes. Because in Macedonia, uh, we haven't got uh, a lot of space for non-formal education. Sure. And it's very important. Yeah. Yeah. Well, particularly, uh, Bearing in mind the multi-ethnic character of Macedonia yes, yes. to bring all the different communities together because we have more and more problems of separate, separate teaching and all of that. Yes, yes. Very, and what sort of sport do they, are there any sporting activities that they're doing? Well, it's, uh, tomorrow you'll be doing some sporting things uh, in the park. Or yeah, tomorrow we'll have some workshops in the park yes. from the NGOs from the schools, mm -hmm. so it will be like uh, interesting. Very good. Very and how many activities. students do you think would participate? Uh, it depends mainly on the weather. Because yes, we have informed uh, a lot of the schools, mm -hmm. and a lot of the schools want to come. Yes. So if the weather is good, uh, we are expecting. If it doesn't rain, mm -hmm. we are expecting. Yes, so yes, that's good. That's very good. Yeah. Children, you have some questions for Mr. Pura? Yes. What do you suppose to do with that children who are not going to school? Well, uh, I mean, this is uh, something which uh, confronts many societies in Europe uh, and also in, in many other continents. And in Europe, uh, we have individual member countries have programs to promote education uh, and to try and reduce the number of children who leave school, mostly from uh, deprived uh, communities, uh, from uh, separated homes, things like this. Uh, and uh, not all countries uh, is it obligatory, but there are uh, social programs to try and encourage uh, that uh, those children who have a tendency to leave, that they should remain in the schools. And here, of course, it's a big problem because there are many uh, children uh, that the average dropout of schools is much higher here than in other countries in the region. So really it is something that has to be done. But it must, uh, it can only be successful if it, if it involves the parents, the teachers, and the government. Uh, and the parents must, you know, be encouraged to see the advantages of keeping children in school so that they can really get a proper education. So it's a partnership effort that is required. And sometimes in some countries, of course, schooling is very bad. Uh, where I was uh, brought up in the west of Ireland, uh, the school, uh, the 
rain was coming in by the roof. We had buckets on the floor. So then my parents said no, they preferred to send me to Dublin, which was the capital of Ireland, which was far away. But I had to be in boarding school because I could not, uh, uh, the, the education facilities, but I was able to do that because my parents had enough uh, resources to send me to school. But for those who don't, it's a big problem. Now Ireland is much more successful and uh, all the schools are top, top quality, so here too, that will happen one day. Uh, could you briefly tell about, uh, uh, us about uh, the education you had? About? Education you had. Uh, education I had. So, yes, I was in boarding school mainly. Uh, and in, um, in um, uh, Dominican and Carmelite. So, it's religious order schools. Catholic schools. Yes. And then, <coughs> and then I went to university and I did law. I was a very average student. I wasn't <laughs> the best. But I, I, uh, my father always taught me, said it's very important to uh, get as much qualifications as possible. Uh, languages also, because this will put you in a much better position to get a job. And languages is really important. The more languages you know, the better place you would be uh, for getting jobs. From the school period, I think it was uh, the field trips we used to do, you know, where we would go out. Out yes, and learn other things together, uh, like out into nature or hiking, uh, and it brought another dimension to school, and it gave you uh, open the horizons. You know, nature. You would look at the animals and things, flowers. So you would learn really much more, and it, and when you go back into the classroom, you have a much brighter a more interesting outlook and uh, I think this is what I enjoy the most apart from the fact that being in a classroom sometimes you get a bit tired of it uh, so it's good to compensate with these outdoor uh, outdoor activities and the other thing I used to like was writing essays you know you're given a task to do or a subject like an essay on your holidays or something like that and I enjoyed writing and writing. Have you moved it? 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 Have you Well, it's very difficult because, um, I mean, there are standards of education uh, everywhere, but a lot often depends on the teacher. And so if you have a teacher that is really good and that can inspire, so even the most boring subject, the most difficult subject like mathematics, I was very bad at mathematics, <laughs> but they would make it interesting. So they would make it really a subject that you would enjoy. So, no, 
Why? I was yeah. too, because I was hopeless. I was really bad. Because <laughs> not that I'm building mathematics. And um, my my father said to me, "Your hope you cannot count." She said, "You'll never be a good businessman." <laughs> and I was more for the literary things, writing, painting, things like this. So, but it is important to be able to do maths. Kako bilo njegovoto djecvo, bezgrižno, mnogo siromašno, tažno? How was your childhood? Whether you were a, a sad child, a happy child? Well, uh, we had difficult uh, childhood because um, my we had to go, how can you explain, political exile? Or no, because well, of the political situation. It was exiled, so we were we were very poor because we had to go uh, to another place and make a new life. And <coughs> so um, I remember uh, when I was maybe about how old are you? Yes, this. The ten. ten. Well, when I was your age in the morning, I used to go down to the lake to get fresh water, bring it back up to the house so that we would have water for cooking, and we would uh, have our baths in front of the fire, you know, in a big basin. So it was very difficult, uh, but it made us very strong, our character very strong, uh, and that uh, if we persevere by Working together, we would have better living conditions, and it made us appreciate very much all the small things in life, uh, and also appreciate much better the many things that one takes for granted, like the lights. We had no electricity, we had the special petrol lamps, and things like this. But then, when things got better, we were able to appreciate much more. Now, I think, uh, in many societies, children have too many things too quickly. So, you know, they get spoiled. And it's very important to uh, always appreciate uh, the, you know, the special things. Because Децата имаат многу работи, многу одеднаш и вика се разсипуваат малку, вика не ги ценат нештата. И вика ама тоа не направи во животот многу посилни. И вика подоцна во животот се сменија некои работи, станале побогати, вели но научивме да ги цениме работите во животот. And it also made us realize that if we really, you know, stay together, work together uh, and help each other, help each other that we will really succeed and also never to give up hope, always to persevere mm -hmm. and you will always achieve your objective. And we will try to be more powerful, to be together between us, and we will try to help one another, to follow the goal that we have set so that we will succeed and every time we will succeed. Even the most difficult situations, always to keep hope. In which conditions did you educate? So, uh, as I mentioned, it was in the boarding school. Internet. And for uh, university? In university in Dublin, and then I did postgraduate in, in France, uh, specialized in European law. And, and then I did training, you know, uh, in the institutions and doing research 
and then I started my first job. Yes, I started getting a salary. <laughs> I remember receiving my first pay packet of the month and thinking, gosh, I'm rich. <laughs> 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 Факултет во Даблин, право студирал, па пота постдипломски студии во Франција, исто европско право, па почнал истражување работа во волонтерски, па постава по некои институции. И вика кога се вработил, кога добил првата плата, рекол, леле, кога сум богат. Did you was a problematic child? Was I a problematic child? I don't think so, no. I was uh, quite docile. I was, we were between my, I have one brother and three sisters. I'm in the middle. And uh, whenever I had a problem, I would call my big brother. <laughs> so, but we had, because of our difficult childhood, we were very close. And we have always remained very close in our family. My my father will be 90, 98 in July, and my mother will be 91 in June. Нели поради тешкото детство многу блиски бевме со моите братја и сестри и мојот брат и моите сестри и вика ден ден се така многу се се дружат и се сакаат. Вели татко му во јули ќе набрам 98 години. A mother was 91 years old in June. And uh, people ask me, how is it possible that they are still alive so elderly? And I say, well, really, I think the key to long life and healthy life is uh, physical activity and mental activity. To be always active, you know, regular exercise and then also the mental activity. I have put in their packages uh, a leaflet for, uh, for the marathon. Ah, so yes, yes. You can invite them for the race yes. of 2000. So, meters. speaking of physical exercise, <coughs> I'm sure you all do lots of sport. various mm -hmm. sport. So, on the 11th of May, uh, we uh, are organizing together with the Sports uh, Council of the City of Skopje and also the, the, the City of Skopje uh, a race. So, there is how many? There's five, two, 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 two kilometers, kilometers, five kilometers, half a half marathon, and full marathon. Mm -hmm. Full marathon might be a bit much for you now, but you can do five or you can do two. And last year, there were many, many children participating. It was a lovely uh, atmosphere, and mm -hmm. so you'd be most welcome. So in your uh, packages, you will find information about uh, yes. where to apply, and so you really enjoy it. And even if you don't want to run, just to to support those who are running. <laughs> Имате ли флетче во пакетчинето што ги подготвивме за вас? Имате да видите како кај ќе се почне, кај ќе се пријавите и така. Did you have any problem in your education process and if you do, what kind? Yes, I, I did. Um, one year I didn't, I failed the exam. So, um, so yeah, that was a bit of a shock, I guess, because I didn't study enough. I'm in shock as well. <laughs> so, so you have was to... Because you was lazy or? No, I don't think I was lazy. Uh, I was uh, probably dreaming of other things and not concentrating enough. And also because I was uh, in maths, I was not good. <laughs> and that was my big problem, the maths. So I, um, I repeated uh, the, the, the course and everything. And so, but I, I think I did realize that you really have to concentrate, you have to focus, and you really have to put your mind to it in education. It's really important. 
And the other thing is, of course, that uh, so it's important to pass or to get to the best mark possible and uh, never to give up. And you know, there are some great leaders in the world who also, like Nelson Mandela, who is for me one of my favorite heroes, who is uh, South African, uh, he's black. Uh, and you know, in South Africa, they had this apartheid system where if you were black, you could not, or colored, you could not <laughs> vote uh, in elections uh, and for decades. So, uh, and Mandela was in prison for his political beliefs for 27 years. And then he was released uh, and in 1990, and then he was elected the first uh, president of a democratic country in 1994. I was in South Africa at the time, and it was, it was extraordinary. This is a big country, 44 million people. Uh, Macedonia would be a tiny dot. <laughs> so, um, and he's a great symbol of moral authority. And in his autobiography, he says that he failed his uh, law exams twice. And he said, but the third time he got to it. So, you know, it means the lesson is never give up. Uh, uh, децата во Македонија нели не посетуваат настава поради тоа што немаат храна и облека. Are you familiar with the information that uh, many of the children who are um, dropped out from school uh, the reasons behind are poverty that they yes, don't have yes, money for uh, food and, and clothes. And this is why uh, it, the, the effort of keeping the children in school requires the parents and the, the school and the government the government must ensure that those who don't have resources must still be able to attend school uh, and not be discriminated against for lack of money. Uh, who can help in these uh, children who are not going to school? Well, I think it really requires uh, the commitment of the parents. The parents with the local authorities, uh, so that, um, you know, uh, really, uh, because sometimes the parents are also, you know, not doing enough to persuade the Треба да ја преземат одговорноста за и локалните власти, да речеме другите, за децата да одат на училишта, ама често пати мислам дека родителите не превземаат доволно иницијатива за да ги натират своите деца да одат на училишта. А тие што немаат родители? And what about those children who don't have parents? Yes, it's even more a, a responsibility of the government at the local level and also at the national level uh, to make sure that those children are catered for and that uh, they are looked after as if they had parents. In our country are a big number of people who don't have any education. Yes, I know. What about them? It's a big problem. And Ireland was also like that because we were very poor. <laughs> and uh, so many young people left for America, Australia to get jobs. And it was very difficult for them because they didn't have a higher education exam, you know. So they would be doing construction business, construction working, manual work and that. And then because the government really, uh, despite the fact that there were not enough economic resources, they devoted more and more uh, money to education, ensuring that all the children, whether they were poor or rich, parents, no parents, that they would all be able to go to school uh, and have a proper education. 
And this made Ireland one of the most educated countries in Europe, the level of education, in the uh, 70s and early 80s. And there you saw that people were still emigrating, but they had a much higher level of education. And now we are a country of immigration. People are coming into Ireland because of all the job opportunities. And that is all because of the high level of education. So here, this is what we're saying to the government, they have to devote more resources to education, improving the schools, uh, because the schools, some of them are in a terrible condition. I've been to them, you know, with no windows, no heating, uh, toilets, very bad. Uh, so the, really, the government has to make more, devote more resources to improving the facilities, the quality of the education, and making sure that every child has access to, to education. You want to tell that the uh, government is uh, for what? At, at full. Okay. Uh, responsible. 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 You're responsible for that. Yes, yes, that's the main, because the government has to take the lead. You know? The government must take the lead in ensuring that there is better uh, education facilities uh, because <clears throat> education uh, is an area where politics should not interfere. Education is an area where really all the welfare of the children is the primary priority. Did you have visited any school in our country? Yes, yes. yes. I've been to many schools where I've spoken. Yes, but how can we help? How can we help? You mean how can government the government help? Well, they have to devote more resources. They have to give more money. Yes, instead of uh, building things that uh, are good for a party, they should devote the money to, and this is for all governments, they should devote the money to education. I have one question. Do you yes. think that the things are improving in Macedonia? Yes, I mean, there are definitely efforts to improve things, but uh, what, what is still lacking is continuity. You know, it shouldn't be just once <coughs> off, you know, things work and then people, uh, then um, the civil service change because there's a new government, things like this. There needs to be a consistent effort, you know, focusing really determined. For example, personally speaking, I think these elections now we're going to have on the, can you vote? Yeah, okay, how old are you? 23. 23, so you can vote. Who else can vote here? You can vote. You can vote. So, person speaking, I think these elections are a waste of time now, the 1st of June, because we should have <coughs> devoted all the effort now to the reforms. But okay. So, um, then it will be very important once the elections take place that really all the focus is on the reforms that will enable the country to move to the next stage of the journey toward the EU. So this is what we will keep reminding, you know, the, the incoming government and all of that. They really have to, if they're serious about uh, responding to the aspirations of the citizens, I mean, I saw the poll this morning, 95% of the citizens are still in, are in favor of EU. So they must respond to that aspiration and really focus on those reforms that will make all the difference for the country to join. Uh, and. Um, so it's so it needs really a, a more consistent, determined effort. As Commissioner Wren, you know, our Commissioner for Enlargement, he came here in March, and he said we need to stop with this go stop go stop. You know that things go and then suddenly a few months, uh, for a few months nothing happens, uh, or there's a boycott or whatever. So there needs to be this constant uh, move ahead. Yeah. Can you bring the packages? Ah, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you.
I want to ask you one more question. Yes, of course. Uh, you are at war in sports. And the sport is very important for education. Yes. What is your favorite sport? Well, I um, I used to do a lot of running. I did uh, oh about I think over forty full marathons. Forty full marathons. I, I did the New York marathon. That's forty two kilometers ten times. And um, now of course I'm a bit slower, but I love climbing. Yeah. Well. So last year I got all my stuff on the cold app, and this year we hope to work so much with climbing. Yeah. Really nice. so I love the nature. And that's why sport is really important because it keeps 